Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack of Productions. Today I back off being joined once again by Jake, and like always, Fluff. What's going on, y'all? What's up, beautiful people? And like always, there's buttons down below. Feel free to click them. They're there for a reason. So today's matchup, this is actually our finals. And as you see, earlier this week, uh, Jake defeated what people consider to be the boss of our locals. And I'm kind of like that secret boss that you have to like, after beating the boss, unlocks, but I'm not as hard as the boss sometimes. So it's kind of weird. But so Jake found access to that secret vault, and he's challenging me finally. You are the uh, you are the noob cybot or smoke reptile of the shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we've had King Cole on a lot this week. I'm aware of that because Fluff also played during the RPO tournament. So I do apologize for that. But like I said, we're now doing two cameras at our locals, and with the new people at the shop, they're not really ready for cameras yet so we just didn't want to have what's the best way to put it we wanted better quality of matches because these people are still learning and they're learning at a very quick rate and actually we, we just, did uh jake the games two. just take longer yeah. yeah and jake too did get a chance to uh, appear earlier this week as well so hope you all enjoyed that match but i'm bringing back uh, soul striker aod which you all saw earlier this week as well when i played against uh tanner's go tanks deck so this is kind of a you know what we do? So we're just going to go right into it. What were you thinking, Jake? Because I, you've played this deck before. Um, we went in, uh, early in the week to one of the breweries and kind of did some testing and whatnot. So going into this, what were you expecting? Uh, going into this, I was expecting to get smacked around. Uh, in testing earlier this week, Bancroft had been beating me like a drum. And uh, honestly, after playing against Fluff, who is one of the better players at our shop and constantly puts me in my place. Uh, I, the last person I wanted to play in the finals was you, but here we are. Um, I think you made a comment about when you used that hatch that there was only one Bobbity in your deck. And yeah, and you rode another one. So, I was kind of disappointed in myself charging that Golden Frieza, because the goal of my life from here on out was to remove that Bobbity from your field and pray that I could somehow disrupt the flood of AODs that was coming my way. Now, I will say this, because this was at a Fernley's Locals, even though we should have been more serious, I should not have revealed to you that that was only one of my deck. No. Uh, but at a normal event, I will not mention that at all. So my opponent sweats a little bit. But here was the problem. I I charged Ubuni because I felt like that's a good turn four play. But the longer I know I go against your deck, the more defensive capabilities you gain. And I didn't want to kind of push. I wanted to do my normal strat, just try to hit you hard and fast as, you know, as much as possible. And when I played the hatch, I only saw the one Bobby and I was like crap that's fine because in my hand currently I had another hatch as you saw I had a garlic junior um I had I want to say a super combo and dimension magic which are the actually the only other two blue cards in my hand so off my two first life I happened to get the bobbies the problem was that I didn't want to charge a dimension magic I didn't want to charge a super combo because this early in the game I didn't know of how my hand was looking, if those would have been the best choices to charge. I think a boonie was a solid charge yes. choice there. Yeah, but because turns two and three just got really hard because I didn't want to charge a unison either. Yeah, especially you could just back it up with the uh, golden apes and stuff that uh, Soul Striker tends to run. That baby unison gets really scary. So. Now I'm in a situation where I'm like, okay, cool. Whatever I do, I have to hang on to this hatch in my hand. If you drop that Golden Frieza, it's the only way I can recover. So, luckily enough, though, I didn't see a Turtleless Eater. And I had that Garlic Jr. in the gate, so I was able to do that to bring the Turtleless on the board. You did counterplay it, but the Turtleless comes into play. Barrier, you can't target it. Um, I think we Sorry. found yes. out later that it comes in with skills negated, yes, but I didn't could've. know that. So I thought it had barriers still, and that's why I didn't target yeah. it. We, we catch it in another turn, right? When I said, Jake, I forgot to mention one key fact. That's my bad. Just because in our pre uh, previous testing, you didn't, you never counterplayed during that window when I played Garlic Jr. 
So, like, the opportunity didn't come up. I'm like, oh, yeah, skills are negated. Uh, but whenever I play normal AOD, I'm always like, yeah, skills are negated. For some reason, Soul Striker, I just never said that. And I think it's just because it's a different leader. And my brain just wasn't thinking of it in the time. That's okay. I mean, again, like we always talk about, it's my responsibility to know what your cards do. So if I didn't fully understand the Garlic Jr. effect, I should have just asked to read the card, you know? But I didn't feel, like, bad about it or anything. I think I even said while we were playing, ah, don't worry about it. So this unison always creates a slight problem for me. And that is that it becomes a target, which is fine. It's less attack going to my leader. It gives me more turns to potentially uh, pop off when I want to pop off. And But like I said, I have, at this point, I think I've only seen one other negate since of Garlic Jr. It's the Dimension Magic. And I just got to hold out and let you just hit my units. And truth be told, I was hoping you would just hit it low enough and then just go, okay, cool. But you just kept on putting stuff on the board to swing with. Or you kept on doing something to swing again. Well, yeah, well, the, the plus two on it is just way too much to let live. For sure. The the good thing about that unison, though, and is those are attacks that didn't go to your life. And that's attacks that you didn't have to combo out of. So yeah, he killed the unison. Sucks to suck. But those are attacks that didn't come at you. So treating it as a smoke and mirrors type of thing isn't the worst thing in the world either. The problem, though, is that my draws haven't been good enough yet, and I would right. rather have gone down to four life to start super comboing to get more stuff to my hand. Yeah. Um, and here at the Garlic Jr., even though I have no other targets in my deck, you have to still shuffle afterwards. It's part of the um, the auto one played. It's not an option. Yeah. You have to shuffle. Good um, to know if you just want a shuffle effect. For sure. <laughs> and that's a, that uh you mentioned like you would rather been down to four life. Um I think that's a really good lesson for people to kind of take. Um I see a lot of decks that awaken at like four life or sorry, five life, six life, and then they aggressively defend their leader and keep their leader up to like six life all the while. Their super combos are dead. They're missing out on other cards that could happen, and they end up getting resourced out and not having enough cards in their hand to play through their turns. So, like, stop defending so aggressively, and this isn't towards anyone specifically, but, like, don't be afraid to take non-critical damage if you're not at full life. So right, yeah. yeah. Here's the hugest play in the game for me. So, like I mentioned earlier, I'm the secret boss. Jake found the relic of time, which is the only way to truly handicap me. It's very weird, but he chooses the hat check in my hand, and I'm sitting here like motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like I was so pissed, and you're like, yeah, I'm also killing the garlic junior too. And I'm like, I mean the uh, the bobbin. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you do that. And then Unstoppable Invasion will remove a marker from his unison. And then because I've lost a field, it's going to remove the Garlic Jr. negate that he played earlier. I can't pick the Turtles because it has Barrier, or else I would do that. And then I get to swing in again for another 25 double at the unison just to remove. So here I'm in a tight just situation. Absolutely, mess. <laughs> I'm swinging the Turtles first, um, if correct, to get the top five search because I need to find... Another hatchback. I need to find a uh, the Unis. I need to find something that can help me out in this situation. That's that's a rough situation to be. I don't think I've ever seen AOD's field cleared so quickly without a field clear card. Like that's insane. And unfortunately, the only target there worth grabbing was the Turtles. Now there was the Andrew Thirteen crit in my hand. And I'm mean, sorry, in my uh, um, in the um, those top five, but the problem is I cannot play that card without the Bobbity now. So like, getting rid of that Bobby just completely shuts everything. So I just grab the Turtle List. If anything else, it's just another card for me to charge next turn. The um, so right there, I try to pay for something. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do it because I don't have the uh, Bobbity. Now I will mention there was a huge. I think I even told you about it. Uh, it was a huge turn one mishap that I did. And I don't know how much it would have changed, but I could have played Android 13 against you and then swung leader and just restood my leader. 
I didn't be able to negate the girl because I would have had a little bit more cards on the field. Yeah. And you would have potentially maybe chose differently on your targets. Probably not. But you would have at least swung one of your cards towards the uh, the Android 13, just getting rid of yeah. that crit. To remove it. Yeah. Because Which, having played Soul Striker, it, no, I, now that I know that you're awakened at six, the best strategy for me to employ is to just try and kill whatever you put on board and starve you out. Yeah. And then try and take all six of your life in, in one go or in two turns. Yeah. Yep. So here I had a hard cast this trunks negate, which is fine because you have five drop cards on the board. And so if you were to swing up them, you're going to have to get rid of stuff. Or bottom deck cards. Right. So I'm here just, I'm just debating on playing a card to stop the floodgate, but decide not to. And Pinnacle of a Clan is just going to continue putting in an aggressive amount of work where it's going to warp a card or it's going to drop a card and then drop a card out of the hand every single turn. Like, and plus it's a potential dual attack double strike every turn as well because of that effect. Yeah, but you do have to pick so a filled card to do it though. That right. fits into what the deck wants to do though. Like. That that what that's what the deck wants to do. The deck gets advantage for doing that. It's such a good like. It, yeah. It's one of the best cards ever printed at the rare rarity. Like if we yeah. ever do a top ten rares, I'm gonna lobby for this thing super hard. Uh, yeah, we, me still, too. we still haven't done the five drops yet, guys. Because uh, we've been Gen Con hey. testing people. <laughs> oh, um, I'm petitioning for this Frieza to be somewhere in that list. Uh, yeah. I, I can get behind that. So going to turn five, I ended, I grabbed the Nutterbull cards. I charged that because I want to play the Tartalus I had earlier and just do another search. I gotta do something. Getting the swing to reset the energy. Waiting to see if you would hard cast a dormant potential, but you didn't, so... Yeah, I had spent one the turn prior and uh, didn't really feel like it got me very much. So I don't know if I would have used one here, even if I had it. And so here's an interesting situation. This activate main costs two green to do. And because the card has an activate main that says play this card and then your opponent can't tackle battle cards anymore. For a moment, I'm like, I'm going to counterplay it. And I was like, wait, hang on. Is that part of like if this card's play or not? And we went back and we looked at it. We went, we, uh, and I'm like, I think you get the effect regardless if I counterplay it. Kind of talked to Jimmy about it. And he's like, yeah, he agreed. Like, since it's part of the activate main and it does not say if you play this card, it's kind of like Hatch Act. You know, if you activate it, even though if, if someone were to for some reason counterplay it, I'm not sure why you would do that. The effect's still in there because it's part of the counterplay. Part of the counter skill. Yeah. yeah. Where this is part of the activate main slash battle. You can still get the act. You still get the full cost of that activated activated cost or the sequence of it, even if it were to be counterplayed. Yeah. So I was like, "Cool, you know, I won't search cards then." Thanks. Yeah, the feels bad. Feels bad. Yeah, I. The more I play with this Kabito Kai Secret Rare, the more I like it. You can steal it innocent. You can turn off uh, most of an opponent's turn. It's like a like a limping baby hatchyak. It's a 40k double striker. And um if it if it leaves your battle area, it gets warped. So even if they try and steal it or something, I don't know exactly how that interaction works. But uh it leaves the field, it gets warped. Or it gets removed from the game. So Yeah. Like so, it get, can't steal it. Which is a pretty pretty standard effect on secret rares these days. Yeah, yeah. Just to prevent the abuse bill. You've activated right. the main the second time. Um, you got rid of my Turtleus. I'm shuffling my hands right now. And you get to pick a new card. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if we've already done it or not. You might be getting ready to lay your hand down. Yeah, here he comes. And like I said, that pendant of time, whatever it is that you found, is the, like, it's helped you out so much. Oh my god. Hitting Ooh. my Golden Avenger 
was just like a smack to the face. And at this point, I'm like, what do I do? You've ripped two key cards out of my hand now that could turn this game around. And I haven't seen anything else yet. And, and truth be told, I should have swung the Turtles first last round. Um, but I wanted to resend the energy in case you were able to do something to make me stop attacking, period. You know, I can't remember right. things. Right, you were worried about Dormant, but just weren't thinking about the Kai at the time. Dormant can be especially punishing against Soul Striker because depending on when you use it in your opponent's turn, you can make your opponent choose between like pressuring you with something meaningful or restanding energy, which was kind of the choice Bancroft had to make earlier in this game. So I let myself go down to one life because I'm just literally I'm just digging for cards. Like I got I have nothing that's truly usable. So I'm like I'm taking much life as possible. I think I'm taking five lives so far this turn. And just going to see what I get. I'm really just looking for Hatch or just another Negate. Just keep this, like, from losing this round. And Jake saw him four open energy. Yeah. Which is super scary. So here, I think you swung and I chose not to Negate. I think I do have a Negate in my hand, but it was kind of like... Maybe he'll just do a push. I think I had two super combos in my hand. And I'm just going to use that as a way of cycling more cards. And I just, just start comboing the world here. Yeah, I figure it's the last attack I'm going to get in this turn. So I, I mean to ask you, um, why the Paragus super combos instead of the Gohan? Because the Gohan will put him back in your deck. But um, with King Cold... A lot of your copies of Fields Beyond the First, you don't want in your deck. Gotcha. So Paragus allows you to not only draw cards first, rather than putting a card from your hand to the bottom and then drawing two, you actually draw two and then warp one. So it allows you to act on perfect information and uh, warp extra copies of Fields if you're looking for combo power or warp battle cards if you're looking for Fields. It, it's basically um, a new ruler in the combo step in a weird kind of way. Gotcha. We also kind of discussed in the last game, too, um, with with Jake and myself, with stuff like Fu Shrouded in Mystery and the Goku Dragon Fist 8-drop running around that turns off battle card skills, the classic quality super combos are 0-0 zero, zero and get the 10 thousand in their auto paragus is a natural one or zero cost ten thousand so even though his draws might be turned off you still get the combo power on paragus against something like a foo shrouded or the goku that you wouldn't get if you were running the other super combo as well like in green it's a really good call and there, bancroft was able to combo out of the paraguses he was able to negate the zamasu swing and here I'm just tapping two for a unison, coming in, just trying to do whatever I can to take this last life. But he manages to escape. I see another unison, just got out of the way. Did the plus two to get another draw. You dorm with me, and I'm like, okay, cool. What's the best play? So I pay one for Hatchack, and I need to go over this quick. Hatchack opens up a time window one. I asked you, is the card coming in play? Fine. You said, yeah. And then you said counter window timing two on the Bobby. Unfortunately, because yeah. the Bobby's already played, that card does not hit that uh, Bobby. Because if I'm correct, it's for the card being played, but it's already in right. play. So I mistakenly called the wrong timing. And uh, in the future, I'll know just to blind counterplay whatever the hatch is going to bring. I mean, the hatch basically has one target attack, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, right. it, the only target hit, it's Bobbity. I didn't know that at the time, so... Uh, yeah, depending on what he was going to bring in is what I played. And then his second swing, I just go ahead and clones to uh, turn off the rest of his turn, as far as battle goes. And then and then the game's done at that point. Yeah. So what I was searching for was a Garlic Jr. Negate to go off anything else in my hand. Um... I saw Hatchyak every time I searched top five, if I'm correct. Oh. And it was just frustrating because I could never get it. 
Um, and that was when I saw the unison, the four drop, uh, uh, Majin Buu unison. And this is the first time I've never seen that card. Like I could search it so easily and just nothing was coming to me. You were ripping every card from my hand. And I think I threw my cards. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I'm done. Like you got it. And there was even a slight hesitation to me fist bumping you because like I was just slightly heated. Um, and I think I made the comment because, like, Jake, you've openly said, like, you know, sometimes you can get a little over yourself when you lose. And oh, I was yeah. like, is this how you feel? Because I couldn't oh, do that's... anything. I was dude, like, dude, every time playing that, that is what I went through when I dropped Fu Shrouded and could not kill him. Like, I didn't even want to congratulate him. I was like, this is just bad. I feel like I beat myself, like, but you did great. Like, and legitimately, he did do great in yeah. both games. No, he did. And you got to pull your SS3 thwarting. So if I ever hear you say the word, I'm a bad player, I'm going to tell you, shut the hell up, SS3 thwarting. Okay. Times, times two. <laughs> times yeah. two. Yeah, I did win one last week, too. Yeah, no, you pulled two really. thwartings two weeks in a row. Uh -oh. Or pulled a thwarting two weeks in a row. Winner, fairy. Yeah. Bitch. So there, there goes my luck for the month. <laughs> yeah. Which means you're not going to do well gen content, huh? Probably not. At least the thwartings are worth as much as what I paid to get into the event. That's so. that's true. Uh, uh, thwartings, I think, are worth more than anything you would get at gen con. Yeah. So, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I know Jake did. Uh, with that being said, keep in mind, there's videos, there's buttons on the screen while Phil does the outro. Um, yeah, Jake's not trash at this game. Read your cards. Know your plays. Yeah, I'm, I'm messing with you guys. Uh, top, there are four videos here. Click on them. Hopefully it's something that, you know, you haven't seen. Enjoy it. Like, subscribe, all fun YouTube stuff. Congrats on winning, Jake. You're like, you've earned it. You're so good with that deck. Like, oh, thank you. Keep man. on it. Um, read your cards. Know your plays. Let us make the mistakes that you don't have to. And as always, fluff out.